proceed. Okay. Good morning, everybody. My name is uh, Leila Garcia. I work with the Elixir Hub at uh, Emboli BI in, oh, <laughs> in UK. And um, I'm going to present today um, effort that we are working with some other collaborators from the medical library in uh, Cologne, uh, in Germany, and also uh, from the um, Polytechnical University in Madrid. So it is uh, bio tier to bio schemas, and uh, our ultimate goal is to enable a knowledge graph on literature um, scientific. Let's going to start first with the background. So we'll learn about this bio tier and bio schemas, and then we will see what we are going to work on this um, hackathon. So schema.org is just a way to add uh, structured data to web pages. So you can just put some tags that can be in different formats. Uh, RDFA can be JSON-LD. JSON-LD is nowadays uh, the preferred format for these. And it just will help to search in genes to figure it out in a better way whether a web page refers to a book or to a play or to a movie, because you can have the same title for all of them, for instance. Uh, Bioschemas is a community initiative that it is built on top of schema.org. The idea with Bioschemas, we have two main ideas there. The first one is to add types related to life sciences directly to schema.org. So we'll have types there as a protein or gene. But we are also building what we call in Bioschemas profiles. A profile is just a guideline on how to use uh, the types that are already provided uh, by schema.org. Why do we want to do these profiles? If you go to schema.org and you see how to model a data set, for instance, or a book, you can have more than 100 properties there. And using 100 properties, probably nobody will do it. And if it is the first time for you facing schema.org, then you will not even know where to start. Some of the descriptions are actually difficult to understand. So the idea with the bioschemas profiles is just to take into account the context where the types will be used and then tailor them. We are tailoring them, uh, giving some guides regarding the minimum recommended and uh, optional properties. What is the cardinality of them? If it is an identifier, probably you want just only one, but if it is a name of a possible tool, you want the name plus the alternate names as well, so you can have many. And whenever possible, we are uh, linking these to control vocabularies. For instance, if you're talking about the data input for a tool, you might want to link this to an ontology known in life sciences for data input so you can better know what it is about. So it's all about the context. For the case of uh, literature purposes, we are working in bioschemas with a project known Biotia. Biotia is a project that defines a schema for structured data in literature. It, it covers metadata, so everything that you have related to the author, title, etc. The references as well, as much as possible, depending on the information that you have in there. The content structure, so we target section, paragraph, uh, subsection, etc., but also the full content. And for the full content, only abstract is possible as well, if that is the only thing that you have. We are working with semantic annotations. So semantic annotation, as you can imagine, is just an expression that you recognize in the text and you associate to a well-known ontology term. Now, in Biotia to Bioschemas, the first thing that we did in this uh, project, and it is already done, it is already available on the bioschemas.org uh, website, was working on the profiles mimicking what Biotia defined for literature um, articles, for scholarly articles. So we have five profiles in there, journal, publication volume, publication issue, scholarly article. These four exist as types already in schema.org. So what we did was uh, given the recommended, optional, etc. Um, elements in there. And we created another one that it is the semantic scholarly annotation, so we can model the semantic annotations. What we want to do is creating the markup and then creating the knowledge graph and then do some analysis and using some tools in there. 
So what we will do during this uh, biohackathon, we will work on the markup, on the getting the data, because without that, we cannot do any analysis. So we have two possibilities, an on-demand on application that just you go to an URL and you will extract the markup information that you want for whichever PubMed or PMC ID that you want, or working on a batch application. If we work on a batch application, then we will have like a bigger set uh, um, since the beginning. So on the first day, I will analyze those possibilities and depending on the analysis, then on the rest of the days, uh, we will work on one of the two options. Because we are doing this markup in a very generic way, we really don't know at this point what, will, what we will get from that. On this occasion, we will use the NCBR annotator because it gives us um, the UMLS semantic types and the UMLS concepts. So we can do later things with those similar to what we did in Biotia, which was analyzing the semantic types and uh, the annotations on the literature to see whether we could group them in a different way and then from there going to a recommendation systems, turning on or off some of those semantic types. But we also need to learn what other kind of analysis we can do with this such a generic markup as the one that it is um, provided by schema.org. So that, that is uh, something that we will work later, not in this uh, hackathon, because that will require more time. But that is kind of our plan uh, to the future. And that was it that I wanted to present today for you. Thank you very much. Uh, thanks to the organizers, and thank you for the invitation.